Uh, so, uh, did you ever attend any civil rights events or events where Dr. King spoke? Both. And really, uh, I believe, no, I'm sure that that's part of what my speech was, uh, you know, what, 10 years ago or something, because it was one of the most, one of the very key moments in my life. So first was, it was February 5th, 1964. So that's what, about 56 years ago. I was a junior in college at Drew University, which is in New Jersey. And Martin Luther King, it, we all knew that he was coming to speak. He came to our university because one of the professors, actually one of Mr. Groom's professors in graduate school was a mentor for Dr. King at Morehouse College. So he came to our university and 5,000 people came out to hear him speak. He's speaking and we had a gym auditorium, which only seated well, less than 2000 people. So the rest of the people had to be outside listening, that kind of thing. But I was one of the people who was inside. No doubt I got there at lunchtime or something, but anyway. And so we heard him give a speech that was very like, it wasn't exactly the same as his I Have a Dream speech, but it was very similar. He talked about the American dream and how wonderful the words are in the Declaration of Independence uh, about how all men are created equal and so on. And then he went on to say how that wasn't happening. It was just a he could have probably talked for five hours and we would have all sit, sat there just uh, eager for more. But when the speech ended, we all stood up and sang, we shall overcome with him. But then I actually went, I was sitting up, not, not the very front, but close enough to the front that I could walk up and get in a line that when I got in the line, probably was only a hundred people. Anyway, to shake hands with Martin Luther King and at least say, thank you. So I got to do that. And, and it was always fun when I taught little kids on Martin Luther King Day, I'd say, well, you have to shake my hand because you would then have, you shook the hand that shook the hand of Martin Luther King. So, but it was a really wonderful moment for me. So he came to our university because of his friend, but also because that was 1964. They'd already started trying to get the passage of the voting rights bill. So a couple of months later, Roy Wilkins, who was the head of the NAACP, do you know those initials? So many initials in life, but it was the um, National Association of Colored People. That was the name of it in those days. And so he was like the highest person in that organization. He came and he spoke. And then some other people in those organizations came and they motivated the students including me, to spend hours and hours writing by hand, you know, kind of, you know, actually with a pen, <laughs> letters to the congressmen and anyone, uh, uh, representatives and senators to say how important it would be to get the voting rights bill passed. Now, months later, actually over a year later in 1965 in, this, in August, it actually did pass. So that was one civil rights activity. And, but the other one was 